Hi, I'm Callum from Town Valley Motorhomes and this is the handover on a Buccaneer Cruiser Caravan. Starting off at the front of the caravan on your A-frame, you've got a VWP hitch, so always pull the handle back when unhitching the car, hitch it to your vehicle, pushing the handle, handle clip in and you'll be able to push the stabiliser head down. You've got an alcohol Doggy wheel, the breakaway cable, make sure that you put that on your designated breakaway point on your vehicle. Or if it doesn't have one, you can wrap it around the ball of the tow bar. 13 pin electric, so make sure your vehicle has 13 pin or an adapter when towing from 7 to 13 pin. And you do have your handbrake. You get your chassis number of your caravan here on. A frame itself and then using the key so you've got a tri mark key which is all your external lockers you can open the front A frame locker and you do have your gas on here so this is our gas bottle that we've got on test so you can get two six kilogram propane bottles on here as you've got twin pigtails to connect the pigtail to the bottle, it's a left hand thread. So the opposite threads with it being gas and it, all you need to do is hand tighten this. So there's no need for a spanner. Turn your bottle on and you've got a changeover valve, a wheel changeover valve. So there's a little diamond here. So you turn it from bottle to bottle. It's shown green on this side. If it was left long enough on this side with it having no gas, that would go to red. So just make sure that you can switch between your bottles depending on which one has gas. So you've got two bottles on there and you've got some storage in the front and if we walk this way you've got your Aldi vent there so that allows all the fumes out when operating on gas so just make sure that's never covered up you've got your aqua roll so you fill your aqua roll with water via a hose pipe then you would drop your submersible pump into the water, putting the cover over here just to stop anything getting into your aqua roll. And then all you've got to do is connect the other end of the pump to the caravan. So lift the flap. There's two pins on the bottom, which are your 12 volt points for power. Push that in. And then just push the flap down so it locks the pump into place. Then you'll be able to put, turn your pump on inside the caravan and that'll pump the water around the system for the taps, toilet, shower and boiler. External shower point. So you just need to pull the plug out. Put your point in there. On the other end of the hose is a trigger gun, making sure that your pump's on and it's a cold water fed shower for hosing off the bikes, the dogs, the kids, the boots. Primark key opens this locker as well, and this is your battery locker. So it has your leisure battery in there, which is a 800 watt, 95 amp hour leisure battery. But it's also got the place where you hook the vehicle up to charge if you're at home, or if you're on a safe with electric, you want to hook the van up. So what you do is you get your hookup blade, you lift the collar, put the wire between the groove, and hook the caravan up first. Once you've hooked the caravan up, you can then shut this locker and lock it so that your hookup leads safe. You'd hook your house up or the site and then your caravan will start receiving power. And underneath, you've got an external TV point with 12 volts. So if you're on a super site, you can connect to their aerial instead of using the aerial on the roof of the van. You're in a hard to reach signaled area. You've got your twin motor movers as it's a tag axle, which are automatic, but we'll show you that in another clip how that works. At the back here, this is your waste master. So to connect your waste master up, you've got this adapter here. 
So the two bits go into the caravan, the one exit goes into your waste master and that is just collecting water from your shower, your taps, your toilet, your taps. So anything that you've drained off, so sink, hand basin, shower, cups of tea, anything that you've drained off via a cup hole goes into here. So pop these into the caravan, pop the other end into the waste master and then when that's full, take it out, put the cap on, wheel it to the de designated waste disposal point and open the bottom cap to drain it off and you may once in a while want to just put a hose in this with some milton and sterilize the waste master out so you don't get any funny smells when storing it in the caravan at the back you've got your cassette so again with the same key the try mark you can open the locker And then to get the cassette out, what you want to do is you want to lift and slide the cassette free of the motorhome or caravan. You can carry it or you can wheel it to the waste disposal point. And then you want to remove the grey cap, press the button at the back, tip the cassette out. Once you've tipped it out, there's normally a tap there, so you put some water in. Give it a rinse, tip out again, and then you go in with a cap full, which is 120 ml of chemical, into the cassette, and it's good to go back into the motorhome. If you are using the tablets, you can put a pint of water in the cassette, push it back into the caravan, and drop a tablet down the toilet into that water, and it'll break up into the cassette. Because sometimes the tablets can be easier to store than the big bottles of chemical. High level brake lights. Making sure that you put your number plates on before you start touring. And then you do have some under storage under the bed. So you've got an onboard water tank there. Some wheel locks. And a hookup cable, which will get you a new one for. Morning lights above the door and then you do have some storage at the front some storage underneath with another external 230 volt socket and tele point so if you wanted to tell you in your awning this would be where you'd connect to and you'd be able to use the aerial on the caravan or from the other side if you're using an external sourced aerial either from the site or a standalone aerial and you do have a 230 volt socket but that'll only work when you're hooked up and a little bit of storage under there and then at the front you've got an external gas point so if you're using a kadak or external barbecue you'll need a length of gas orange rubber hosing and two jubilee clips along with a quick release connector a quick release connector will go into here you'll need a jubilee clip to connect the hose to the quick release connector and a jubilee clip to connect the kadak or external barbecue to the hose and then you can turn it on here and it'll use the bottles from the front of the caravan to power this instead of carrying a spare bottle and all you need to do is turn on your gas tap to allow the gas to come through to this point So to work your motor mover, if you come in and you go underneath the bench nearest to the kitchen, underneath your bench seats, there's a key at the back, this red key here. This is your motor mover isolation key, because these are your motor mover boxes. So you need to turn that on. So turn your motor mover on, like so. You'll get lights to both boxes, green lights, which means they're on. Then if we go outside, using the remote, the handheld remote, you can turn on the remote by pressing and holding these two buttons here. And then you want to choose the direction that you want the motor mover. So you want to engage it onto the wheel so it's going to the green, going forward. So press down the middle one, press this, the movers will start to move on their own. 
until you get a solid green flashing light here. So when it's pulsing, it means it's moving. Solid green light means the motor mover is engaged. So there you go, that means it's good to go. Make sure that you've dropped your handbrake on the front of the caravan. And then using the remote the other way around as this is your hitch, you can then control it so you can bring it backwards. You can bring it forwards. Turn it right, turn it left. And that is your motor mover working. But make sure that when turning it off, you do the opposite. So you would press here and take the mover off the wheel before you start towing it, because you'll damage the motor mover if you don't disengage it. Take it off the wheel, making sure it flashes, and then making sure that you turn the key off underneath the bench seat beside the kitchen, just to stop any power drain off your leisure battery. And then you're ready to tow the caravan away or park the caravan up once you've used your motor mover. To operate your EMP hydraulic leveling system, you've got a handheld remote like so, or inside the door, you do have a main control panel. It's both the same. It's either whether you're going to be using it inside the caravan, putting it down, or you want to stand outside. All you need to do is make sure the jockey wheel is down in its lowest position. So make sure it's fully retracted into each other and then it's down. Otherwise you will get a warning on here that the jockey wheel is too high and you will just have to adjust your jockey wheel. Once you're ready to put the leveling system down and level the caravan, you press the on button. See the lights come on there and you just press auto down. this button here you may have to go close at the caravan for it to get signal for the controller and you've got hydraulic legs on all four corners and two hydraulic stays in the middle on the axle to level off your caravan as you can see there your legs are coming down It's rising the caravan to get it level. And it does them in stages, so it does two legs first, two legs at the back, and the two stays in the middle. As you can see, you've got your two level stairs and then your back ones do come down. And then when the remote control shows green in the middle, you're all level. So you can turn the controller off or the control panel inside and you're good to go. But when you're ready to drive off, hit the on button and hit the up button. It'll bring all the leveling system rams legs up for you so you're ready to either use your motor mover to move it onto the vehicle your towing vehicle or put it on the towing vehicle but you must have your, your leveling system up before you move your caravan so once you come into the caravan you want to turn on your master switch which is this button here so this one turns the main 12 volt or 230 volt on in your caravan if you're hooked up but if you're not hooked up, it'll only be 12 volt off your leisure battery. So hit that switch, that'll turn that on. And then you've got your pump here. So you can turn your pump on and off. And you've got the choice of an internal pump, which will use the onboard water tank, which is below the island bed. 
or you can have it on the external pump which will use the connection of the aqua roll from outside so it'll use the standalone water tank on the outside of the caravan so depending on whether you want to use the water on board or you want to use the aqua roll you'll put on external for the aqua roll internal for the onboard water tank you can test the battery of your unit so it'll say unit battery 13.5 volts there and then you can press and it'll tell you how much water is on board your onboard water tank this switch here is for your awning light and then you've got a switch for the light at the bottom and to operate your Aldi heating and hot water panel you want to turn it on and then you hit, want to hit menu so at the top you can see that there's a picture of a thermometer in a house this is how hot you want the inside of your caravan to be so you can turn it all the way down or you can turn it all the way up to 30 degrees so that is the room temperature of the caravan when the heating is on next you've got the picture of the shower head which is your hot water so making sure that you've got water on board and you've got water in your boiler you haven't drained it down you have it off you can have it on and it'll heat the water to 60 degrees or you can have it to the full bar which will turn off the heating and prioritize the water first so if you want heating and hot water on together you've just got to have it on half a bar that'll heat the vehicle to the temperature that's selected and heat the water to 60 degrees below you've got electric so if you're on a site you'd use electric you wouldn't want to waste your gas so you can have it on one kilowatt which is 750 watts two kilowatts which is 1500 watts and three kilowatts so normally you would use two kilowatts which you'd get from a 16 amp feed should you get smaller than a 16 amp feed you may have to use one kilowatt but if you're away and it's really cold you can have it on two kilowatts and gas together and this is how you select the gas by just selecting it there and that'll use the gas bottle off the front of the caravan to heat the hot water or the vehicle or if you are way wild camping and you are just parked up in a field with no electric you'd obviously have no electric on you would just be using gas for heating the water and the vehicle then you do have an aircon fitted to this motorhome or should i say caravan even so to select the aircon you can turn the aircon light on here and if i hit it so it's off it's on and then the master switch for the aircon is on here so you've got to press ac and then i'll show you how to operate the aircon from there you've got a remote but if you go into the settings on this panel you can set timers and things but i'll not complicate it for you but i'll show you how to reset the panel so if you ever need to reset this aldi control panel there's the reset you can reset it and it should override any faults that come in on the control so panel. once you have turned the master switch on through your aldi control panel you can get your remote and point it to this black infrared eye and it'll flash a few times and it's now turned it on and this is a truma event air conditioning so it'll cool the vehicle it'll heat the vehicle so you've got mode here, so you can choose the mode. So you can have it on auto, you can have it on recirculation, you can have it on cold, or you can have it on hot, which is this one here. You choose your temperature up and down, and you can choose your fan speed, whether it's on one fan or it's on full blast. It's all through here by pressing mode for changing the, the recirculate, the heat, or the cold of the vehicle. Fan speed, temperature, but make sure if you have had it on cold which is this one here and it's low to 16 degrees and you wanted to heat the vehicle it does take about five minutes to start warming the vehicle up because you can't go from having it on cold to then changing the compressor to heat the vehicle it will crack the compressor so when you do change it to heat the vehicle on electric It'll take a few minutes to gradually, slowly heat the vehicle up. It won't just come through hot to 30 degrees. So do take that in mind. And then you do have 
insert timers and things. And if the remote ever goes out of sync, so you get a pic picture of a spanner flashing at the top, all you need to do is press and hold the spanner setting to the eye and it will recycle it, reset, should I say, the remote to the air conditioning unit. And that is your air con working, blowing 16 degrees out of the air con there and it's nice and cold. You can adjust the vents here for where it blows to and isolate the back from the front. But make sure that you're on 240 volt hookup for this to work. If you're wild camping, the aircon won't work as it takes a main supply for this unit to work. To operate the fridge, which is a Dometic fridge with freezer box. So you turn on the fridge here. So you turn it off when you're not using it. And when you're not using it, you'd also have the door open. And to do that, you just press on the side of the courtesy light, pull the two pins out, rest the door upon it, just to allow any air in and out of the fridge to stop any smells from forming in there. Because if you didn't, obviously you've got a rubber seal on, it would close flush and tight to the frame, trapping the air in, and you're gonna get a smell in your caravan. So leave the door open and clean it out once in a while. So to, to operate it, turn it on. You've got the choice of three sources. So you've got the picture of a plug, which is mains 230 volt. So if you were on a site or you were pre-chilling the fridge at home before you left, you would pop it on two mains. As long as the caravan's hooked up, the fridge will work as a household fridge. If you were wild camping, you'd use gas. So make sure you've got gas on board, make sure your bottles are turned on and you can just press the gas flame there and it'll self ignite on LPG. And then if you tone it, you can put it on to battery and your tow car off its engine battery, it'll supply the fridge and it'll basically keep it cool. So it'll act as a cool box until you arrive at your site and you either go back to mains or you go to gas. So this is why I say if you're lucky enough to keep it at home, a few days before you'll want to hook the caravan up, it'll give it a good chance to fully charge your leisure battery. You'll also want to put your fridge on mains, which is this one here, allow that to chill at full temperature, and then the night before, the day before, load your fridge with the shopping that you need for your trip. Allow that to chill for a good eight to 12 hours, and then when you're ready to tow it, Put onto the battery, lock everything up, jump in the car and drive off. And then once you do have your shopping on board, so when you're pre-chilling, so take a step back. And when you're pre-chilling, obviously have it on five, like I've just said. But then once you put, pop your shopping in, just turn it down to three or four. Otherwise, five can sometimes freeze the shopping on board the fridge. And then when you're not using it, you simply just turn it off and leave the door open like I've said. But mains when you're on site or when you're pre-chilling at home. Gas if you're wild camping and you had no electric hookup facility. And battery when you're towing it. If you've towed it with food in and it's pre-chilled, put it on the battery setting and your tow vehicle will supply the fridge with a mains 12 volt permanent feed when the engine's running of your tow car until you arrive at your site and you go back to mains or on again. In the kitchen area, you do have three gas burners with one electric hot plate, which will work when you're hooked up, which is the far left-hand side one, which illuminates with the red light when it's on. And then you do have the other gas. There's three lit gas rings. Make sure that they're cool enough so that you can rest your hand upon until you put your glass lid down. Otherwise, you can shatter the glass if it's too warm. Underneath, you've got your grill. There you are, there's your grill lit. A 
And underneath your grill, you've got your oven. This is your isolation plug for your hot plate, so should that be giving you any problems, you can unplug that. And that is your gas isolation shut-off valve for your hob and cooker. Storage underneath the sink. Cutlery tray. Your freestanding table lives in here. Drawers for storage of pots and pans and other bits and pieces. Push the catch in underneath. You can open the overhead lockers. Plates and a cup rack for storage. This just shows your water system working. It's getting warm there so your Aldi boiler is doing its job properly and heating the water up your microwave is an 800 watt mains microwave so you've got to press eco to wake the microwave and then you can start and it goes up in 30 second increments just here and then you've got your cancel button just there just above the microwave you do have your microwave plug there so if you ever need to change this or isolate it you can and just above, this caravan is fitted with an Oyster satellite system. So to put the dish up, press this button here. It'll open the dish and it will lock on to Astro 2. So it's automatically going to lock on to Astro 2. Let it whiz around the roof and find the signal. And it'll go to its last position, which is Astro 2. And then you just press this button when you're ready to leave your site. And it'll retract the dish so that it's safe for towing away. So with the bed, the bed is folded back in day position. So when you're ready to use it on an evening, just slide it out, pull the mattress forward and slide the back of the mattress down. And there you have a larger bed. But when you want it put away during the day to slide that over and then use the handle at the front, push the bed in and it'll give you a lot more space to walk through to the washroom from the front of the van. Underneath, if you lift it up, you've got your carpets. This is your onboard water tank. So to drain this off when not using the caravan, all you need to do is open this tap here. So it says closed. This end wants to be pointing in towards the caravan. And that's emptying the onboard water tank. And you want to do that, especially when storing the caravan in the winter, as you wouldn't want any water to freeze in this tank. So across the width of the back of the caravan, you've got your washroom. So you've got a separate shower cubicle so remember when you winterize it if you just unscrew your shower head from your shower hose lie the hose in the shower tray it'll stop any water from coiling up in there and potentially freezing leaving all the mixer taps throughout the motorhome open so shower hand basin sink leave them all open and make sure that your shower screen is pinned back before you do start traveling just on here so there's two We've just got to clip the shower screen in, top and bottom, just to stop it from moving when you're towing the caravan. Got a towel reel there for hanging your wet towels. Toiletry space underneath your hand basin. And then your toilet. To operate the toilet, make sure the pump's on. Press the blue button at the back, which is your flush. Always flush the toilet first before you use it, putting a little bit of water in to help lubricate the seal between the blade and the toilet. And then open the blade, which is this handle here, this grey handle, so slide it away from you. And now use the toilet. Give it a good flush after use and bring the handle back towards you. 
You can use ball cleaners on this as a designated Fedford ball cleaner, or if you've bought the blue and the pink liquid together, dilute the pink in an old spray bottle with some water, spray the ball, it'll give a nice fragrant smell, it'll clean that cassette and the bowl of the toilet and then when it is ready to be emptied the light will come up here telling you that the cassette is full and it's ready to be changed. In the front lounge underneath your lounge seats by the kitchen this is your fuse box so you've got all your RCDs and your main trip tester on mains 240 volt and you've got all your 12 volt fuses underneath so you may want to carry some spare blade fuses with you just to stop in case anything does blow a fuse you can replenish it by just picking the fuse out and popping a new one in you've also got the gas isolation valve for your boiler and you've got your winterize toggle here for your boiler so what you need to do with that is come into the caravan when you're storing it in the winter you want to drain off your aldi boiler because it holds 10 liters of water it's very important that you do this otherwise it is an expensive job if you leave the water in it and it does crack the boiler so what you need to do is just lift this up stand it up on end like so and it will allow all water out the boiler and you leave it stood on end when not using the caravan until you're ready to use it again and you would lie it down into this position like so opening all your taps within the motorhome and or should I say caravan and draining off your onboard water tank and then once your satellite has locked on to Astra 2 your telly should come on but should you need to retune the telly for any reason it's very simple to do all you need to do is hit menu which is here channels and you want to do an auto search and find as many channels as you can in your area.